Man, I heard uh, you talking about that on Sirius the other day. Well, you, you just don't have – you don't – again, um, I know you've got a nostalgia for the old days, but the problem is you just don't have – in all seriousness, d you don't have enough reps to go around. Some people like it for the, you know, the extra arm or the system. You know, they can go down and, and throw to, you know, different drills, right, one-on-ones, whatever. There's just not a lot of reps, and that's where a guy like Felipe gives us a lot of flexibility. And, per, you know, he's an ideal right now to be that third quarterback and it can do other things. We need Marcus and Desmond to get as many reps as possible. You just don't – the rules are what they are. So you don't have the two, two full practices, right, and it just, it's harder to manage those reps. Now, some people do it, but our, that's our philosophy. And then we got enough ex-quarterbacks on the staff that they can throw in one-on-ones if they had to. And uh, on the defensive side of the ball, um, what attracted you all to D Ford and uh, how, um, how dynamic was his CFL take? The offer. Offered, yeah, there's Mike Ford. I know there's a lot. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. A, the Fords in there. Mike Ford and then D. Alford. Well, yeah, Tuscan. yeah, Tuscan. Um, a guy that obviously our pro department had eyes on and wanted to bring in. We brought him in for a workout. Those guys do a phenomenal job, um, and so we worked them out. So there's some traits that we liked, and, and we're going to continue to work with them and develop. Can you, can you look at kind of the entirety of your offseason program? What's the one thing you hope that the rules take out of it? going into training camp? Well, there's more than one thing, but essentially the way that we operate around here. Uh, you know, the habits that we want to enforce, practice habits off the field, um, the way we teach and install, learn, learn, really learn the language. That's what you're, that's what you're essentially doing. Uh, there's a lot of, lot, there's only so many routes that people run. There's little nuances to it. Maybe you have conversions here or there, but if most of these guys have run the routes you're asking, it's just different language. It's just learning a new language. What do you, yeah. Does that go for every position, or is it different, say, for Desert Ritter versus Arnold versus maybe Justin Schaefer? Just depending on their background. Yeah. Charles, are you expecting the roster to look different next time you're here for, for camp next month? Um, probably. I mean, maybe, you know, it's you some guys trying out. You know, we could possibly add that, you know, some of those guys. Um, things happen over the summer, you know. Like I said, I don't think you ever tear those guys. Their phones are always on. So, uh, you yeah, know, it's not like we sign them, put them on scholarship, and there it is. Larry, I'm wondering about his wide receiver in particular when you've got so many in this camp right now. Is it your expectation that there will be a smaller number when you come back for camp? Probably. But, again, there's a lot of things that could happen. Um, you know, it could change. There's a lot of different strategies. If you, you feel like you're deficient or, you, you know, somebody you're trying to – May doesn't need a rep, many reps at certain position. You may have to go heavy somewhere else. Sorry. Yeah, uh, you have said a couple of times, and I don't know if you're joking or not. I think you're serious when you say that Alameda Zacchaeus is one of your favorite players to coach. Mm -hmm. Why is that? I am being serious. Um, you try not to play favorites. I try not to play favorites with my kids. Um, I've got three of them. Sometimes, some days, <laughs> I'm partial to some of them more than others, but. Um, <laughs> I was with players, same thing. We love all our players, the guys that we get to work with. But I have a great appreciation about guys like OZ. Uh, he was an eighth round guy, came up the hard way in the NFL. He's dependable, smart, can play multiple spots. Uh, that's a very underrated position, too. When you get in the game day, you know, it takes one play and a guy can go out. And if that's 50% of your game plan, like, you're in a bad spot unless you got guys that can go in there. They, they may play the Z, they can go in there at F, they can go in there at X. Um, he's even got the capability to play emergency quarterback. It, it's ironic, as much as I don't like the University of Virginia, <laughs> that he reminds me a lot of Darius Jennings, who I brought up before, and, and DJ was the same thing. Like, if in any industry, if they're, they, you were going to look for somebody to hire for a job, he would be a guy I would highly recommend. Coach, the offseason is progressive as you try to ramp things up going forward more and more. I know you can't get in pads here, but how do you try to get the intensity up from practice to practice, not only through minicamp, but as you get set for this dead period going into regular training camp? Well, that's why I kind of look at it as a buildup. The rules are what they are. You know, we're trying to, you know, in a little bit, if you look at the industry, it's you're going to ramp up for nine weeks and then you're going to break for five, five and a half, almost six. You know, it's kind of a, Interesting calendar. I didn't make those rules, but they are what they are. Uh, there are certain things we do 
competitively, when we're being smart in some of the seven on seven, some of the stuff we try to do in strength and conditioning. And all I'm saying, these, these aren't real practices. And that's not a shot. I mean, it's an organized team activity. Some people call them practice. We understand that we have different things that, you know, I'm not going to give everything away that we, we try to do behind the scenes. And so it's a buildup. And then there's an expectation. We come to camp, it cranks up. And as you get in the preseason games, you're ultimately getting these guys ready, ready to go by September 11th. Um, coach, you had the opportunity to coach Anthony Ferksker, which was really cool in Tennessee. So could mm -hmm. you talk to me about his character and how you see him being a mentor to the rookies out there and the younger tight ends like Kyle Pitts? Yeah. Uh, Ferks, another guy that's interesting story out of Harvard. Um, and I always joke with these guys, and I'm probably serious more than not. Just because you went to Ivy School doesn't mean you're smart. <laughs> um, I think he's an applied mathematics major. So he sees the world very you know, black and white, and sometimes there's gray in football. So I, I get on him about that. But all seriousness, he was an undrafted player that people wanted to make a fullback. He was in the Jets training camp. He was with KC in the offseason. We brought him in as a tryout guy in 2018 as a, as a um, in the rookie camp, and he flashed. And we saw him as he evolved. He really wasn't a fullback. He was more of a receiving tight end. And so he earned a roster spot, and we get into camp. And somebody that took advantage of it because we had Delaney Walker, who was a vet, similar to where Patterson is right now. Some of the things where you may manage him, and then the opportunity was there, and he took off and ran with it, up and down practice squad. And then at 19, he made some of the biggest plays down the stretch um, against New England. I think in the regular season against Kansas City in two minutes. So it's a guy that's been fun to work with. I'm happy to work with him again. And he, he's been with me and now in three different roles, tight end coach, Offense coordinator and now head coach. So he can kind of help fill in the blank sometimes. So we're happy to have him. When you look at Ed Ritter specifically, I know Ed's you know, kind of that more generic question about all the rookies, but with Ritter, when you're sending him away for the next five, six weeks, is it, do you kind of give him a plan of saying, hey, by the time you get back to camp, we want you to get in trouble? It's a dead period, Mike. Well, but <laughs> Oh, well, he, he has expectations, right. and, they, and they are different. In all seriousness, they are different at quarterback. Yeah, absolutely. But it's a dead period. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, when you work with him, though, say out here, like, what are, are you seeing that growth in him day to day that you need to see? Yeah. I mean, regardless of your hot take on your, you know, the three reps of your, uh, I love it. You, you, I knew there was always somebody in the crowd, and you're the guy. You're the guy in a, in a, uh, Seven on seven OTAs, but no. In all seriousness, Desmond doing a good job. He's very intelligent. There's a lot of things that you can't see. I mean, it's, in all seriousness, I do the same thing if I were you. I mean, you're watching what you, what you, you know, the competitive part, and you're looking at complete, incomplete. And there's a lot of things that go into playing quarterback and what we ask him to do. Um, and clearly, he's got to continue to improve there. And you, you, you guys come out to training camp, you need to see the results as well, or in preseason. But behind the scenes, the things that he's done that that have impressed me as a rookie is really from the neck up, how he's operating. When we do these rookie walkthroughs and we do these insulations and on the field and his command. And so then you're betting on some of the physical things that you've seen at times to catch up. But he's light years ahead of most young quarterbacks have been with from the neck up. And I, I will give him that compliment publicly. When did, you, when did you realize that that might be the case? Oh, well, I mean, there's a lot of that goes into, a, you know, the scouting of a player. Um, from the area scout to the national scout, you bring him in, you talk about him. Our experience, our, our ability to to meet with the player and, and what we took away from it on the film and what we were excited. And that's why we took him. After that dead period, how easy is it to tell who is pretty staying sharp and who is it like, what is some, in particular at quarterback, what are some of the tells that, that you know that? You could tell if they've been working on their own. Just, just the recall of stuff, calling plays in at practice, just how sharp they are. It's like, Difference in if you prepared all semester and you're ready for the exams, or you, you took the syllabus and said, all right, here's what I can try to cheat the system, and I'll go cram the night before. You can tell. Uh, but yeah, that'd be one clear way when they come in and how what kind of command he has, recall, all that stuff. So you saw my transcripts? Maybe some of mine, too, depending <laughs> on the class. Justin? Uh, you guys seem pretty excited about the signing of Casey Hayward, and AJ, uh, mm -hmm. AJ Terrell was, was pretty psyched about that. What have you seen out of Casey during the offseason work? Very smart football player. We knew that. Um, you've gone against him at different times, watched him from afar. You bring him in. You know people that coach and are close to him. And a lot of things that people told you that worked with him fast, we're starting to see. You know, the guy loves football, got a very 
smart football mind and hopefully you can pass some of that wisdom down to some of the other guys. I thought it was interesting Drake London said that this is a really close rookie class and he said he'll be with them for a long time. Is that something that you also kind of look for? I don't what know close rookie class, like really like they, they mesh well with each other. Is that something in the scouting process that you try to look for or is that just a coincidence? Well, I think it you know, goes to probably some of the character traits that you get along with. I mean, it is a team game and you want guys that everybody's prideful. You wouldn't have made it this far, but you do need to have the ability to rely on other people to be successful in football. So that's, it's a good character trait and you, you're never going to get it perfect, but it is something you value. With Drew Dahman and Matt Hennessy, how are you seeing them push each other? I know Dom No, no. I mean, you are. Um, it's no different than the quarterback room. I mean, you got guys that want those jobs, uh, but they're they're going to push each other to try to outwork, and they have a good spirit of cooperation while at the same time competing. And right now, we're not doing a lot of the, the heavy team stuff you'll see during training camp, but the way those guys work off the field, meetings, weight room, uh, yeah, it's, I've been very pleased. I imagine, like, like what you're saying, the stuff off the field is there almost with the offensive line, because you don't have to pads on, because you're not kind of doing the real live work that you do in training camp. How do you kind of evaluate where they are um, at this point? Yeah, uh, I told it together here, Dylan. Um, <laughs> but no, no, well, a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's actually a good thing. Again, how you want to use the time, um, where they're at fundamentally, because there is a lot of things you can do individually. You're trying to enhance, and there's a ton of individual drill work you can do this time to try to enhance it because as, a, as you get closer to, to games, there's only so many hours and periods you have at practice. So there's a lot of things that fundamentally we're trying to enhance right now that we, we, we can. Um, same thing in the classroom. Another year understanding as, as we evolve, but they know the, the basic foundation. That certainly helps, and you can evaluate all that as well. Some of the guys say that they're going to get together outside during the dead period, and mm-hmm. is that something you can encourage, or you can't even miss a dead period? That's, that's a rusting type question. And again, uh, you just hope you have the right guys. They're going to prepare different ways. They know the expectation coming back in. And if they do, again, you got guys around the league that love to, to leak it out there and show how good of a guy they are, how good of a teammate. There's other guys that it's pro football. These guys all pretty much work. Uh, I don't expect our guys to work. We'll see how many guys want to be Instagram stars when they come back from camp. Coach, you talk about, your guys talk about wanting to be together and the tightness, especially the right. rookies. How does it tell you about what you guys thought and selecting them and bringing them in and the culture? Yeah, the it, it makes you you know feel like you're on the right track with the right type of guys. Uh, it's certainly a test along the way. You're like, all right, well, at least we didn't just completely whiff on the character of somebody. Um, but yeah, it, it's intentional, but as I said, it's not perfect, but it's a step in the right direction for sure. Yesterday, Desmond Ritter was telling us the biggest transition from college to pro for him was play calling and being able to digest that. Mm-hmm. Does this kind of go back to what you were talking about from the neck up? He's, you know, light years ahead of rookies. Have you seen his play calling ability be able to improve yeah, and be able to adjust that? You can tell he's been working on it and he, he can grasp it. And there's a lot of different ways you can you can expedite that process. Or, you know, there's, there's not a perfect way to do it, but you understand, and that's part of it too, you got to understand – the game, how it's being played at college, how, how plays are being called, whether they have the signs and they have the signal callers with the, the, the hats that were like D, uh, D-LED's colors yesterday, that's neon green. You know, you, you look at Ohio State and they have like neon green, they have a Carolina Tar Heel blue hat on, it's just like who's who, and they're signaling. So there's a different way they communicate, a lot of it's on the line of scrimmage. So we're flexible in how we've adapted, but there's still a command that you expect when you do huddle up. Um, Adapted different ways. You know, we've used wristbands before, so you can talk to him with simpler play calls. But you do appreciate the fact that he can command a huddle. He can go in there, and it's not just the game of telephone. I call a play, we put a play in from the script, right? You know, and then he plays a game of telephone, and he can't remember what he said. You can just tell. You can just you watch him operate, and uh, again, step in the right direction. Long way to go, though. Well, that's that's the one thing I think you, you try to evaluate that the, that I do like about the All Star College All Star All Star games, where you see a little bit of that there, what they ask them to do, which is foreign to most of those guys. Um, so, I was pretty sure after our scouting process that he he could handle all that. Anything else? You, you 
doing anything interesting <clears throat> in your dead period? No. <laughs> <laughs> I keep my private life private. I know I'm not on Instagram and uh, you know, posting a quote of the day or a Bible verse or anything like that. So maybe maybe I'll start a burner account and do that for you. <laughs> <laughs>